we're going to wrap the discussion of molecular theory for the second row uh, homonuclear diatomic molecules by taking a look at carbon 2, uh, nitrogen 2, uh, and then oxygen 2 and fluorine 2. Right. This is the molecular orbital diagram that emerges from the combination of atomic orbitals for molecules like boron 2, carbon 2, and nitrogen 2. We have looked at the boron 2 in the prior uh, video, now we're going to look at carbon 2. Okay, so carbon, uh, the electronic configuration of the atom would be uh, helium, and then 2s2, 2p2. Okay, so when we come to this diagram, uh, we can write this is going to be one carbon atom, the other carbon atom, and this is going to be the carbon 2 molecule. Okay, so uh, you just put the corresponding electrons to there and to there. Hans rule tells me that they have to have parallel spins. Okay, and uh, actually, when the atoms are separated, that's, you don't have, in principle, you don't have to have here uh, any correlation between the spins here and the spins there. Those don't have to be up or down. Those don't, don't have to be up or down as long as the, both of them are pointing in the same direction when they're in the same atom. Again, at this point, the atoms are still separate. Okay, uh, what we do after this is just fill out uh, uh, the molecular orbital diagram. Uh, you have here four electrons that are going to fill this sigma 2s bond in and sigma 2s antibond in orbital. And then we have four electrons right here that are going to go to uh, the lowest molecular uh, orbitals uh, right here. So you have one electron, that's where the first one would go, another electron, and that would be what we've done for boron, but now you have two more. So the third electron goes there, and the fourth electron goes there. Okay, so when we examine here the bond order, we can compute that the number of electrons in bonding orbitals will be 2, 4, 6. The number of electrons in antibonding orbitals will be 2. Okay, over 2. This is going to be a bond order of 2. So what we actually learn is that the bond order in the carbon 2 molecule is 2. And that's one more than boron 2. So we actually will say that the carbon, uh, carbon bond uh, in the C2 molecule is much stronger than it is in the case of the boron 2 molecule. The other thing that we learn is that the magnetic properties make this molecule be diamagnetic. You have exactly the same number of electrons with spin up than with spin down. So this is not a paramagnetic molecule, this is a diamagnetic molecule. Okay, so this is what happens with car uh, for carbon 2. We can continue and do here nitrogen 2, and this is going to be pretty fast. The only thing that changes here is that now you have one more electron. Okay, so when you come to this diagram, uh, you just write here this as nitrogen, uh, nitrogen 2, nitrogen, and then put one more electron right here. Okay, and the extra two electrons are just going to end up in this orbital. Alright, that is the molecular orbital diagram for nitrogen 2. We can calculate what the bond order is. In this case, you will have a total of 2, 4, 6, 8 electrons in one orbitals two electrons in antibody orbitals, so that is a bond order of three. Okay, so notice how uh, the similarities and differences of the various theories are. When you draw the Lewis dot diagram for nitrogen, you would find that this is the structure. And what do we see in the uh, uh, Lewis dot structure is that there's three bonds between them, and we, we assume that this is a triple bond. Uh, when we drew the uh, balance bond theory diagram for N2, what we actually saw is that, well, uh, there were three overlaps between the nitrogen atoms. One of them was the sigma overlap between two PC orbitals, and then you will have two pi overlaps between the perpendicular 2P atomic orbitals. Okay, so this is also a triple bond according to the minus one theory diagram. Well, in molecular orbital theory diagram, what we actually say is that, well, the bond order is three. And you can see that the bond order three uh, emerges from uh, occupation of two pi molecular orbitals and the occupation of one sigma molecular orbitals, molecular orbital. So, so you notice that the language is a little different, but in essence, what all the theories tell you is the same. There's, there's a very strong bond between them. There's three bonds, right? Uh, in bonds bond theory, we say that there's a sigma overlap, two pi overlaps. In molecular orbital theory, we say that pi bonding molecular orbitals are occupied, and sigma bonding molecular orbital is occupied. Okay, so those are kind of the similarities and differences. Okay, uh, the rest of this video is just going to be concerned with uh, uh, the other two uh, molec uh, molecules that we have left, homonuclear diatomic molecules, which are going to be O2 and F2. And the molecular orbital diagram changes a little bit for those uh, O2 and F2. It's going to be a little bit different than the ones for um, boron, carbon, and nitrogen. And the only difference is actually that the order of these orbitals is swapped. Okay, so uh, what's going to happen here is that, let me actually withdraw this. Uh, right here, you're going to have your, your 2s orbital, 
2s orbital that is going to be the sigma 2s, that is going to be the sigma 2s star, and then you're going to have the p orbitals, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and uh, they're not going to form a sigma bonding and two pi bonding, and then the two pi antibonding and the sigma antibonding. Okay, let me uh, finish with the labels here. That would be 2p, 2p. This is sigma 2px, pi, py, pi, pz, pi, py star, pi pc star and sigma 2px star. Okay, just to notice that there's actually not a lot of differences in the molecular orbital uh, diagram, except for uh, swapping the ordering of uh, these orbitals right here. Okay, so you have here that uh, in the case of boron, nitrogen, and carbon, the sigma bonding orbital is higher in energy than the pi's, but that is reversed uh, in this diagram. The rest of the diagram is exactly the same. Okay, uh, you will ask me, well, what is the reason for this? Uh, your book actually explains a little bit what the reason uh, for this is. It's actually not, uh, not uh, easy to explain, but uh, something that you can see here is that uh, the separation energy between the 2p and the 2s orbitals uh, uh, for boron, nitrogen, and carbon is actually smaller than what you actually have in the uh, oxygen and, and fluorine. Okay, so, th so this, this gap is actually intentional right here. Okay, what that does is that, well, if you were to form the sigma bonding orbital as that, what you will have is that that sigma bonding orbital will be extremely close to the sigma antibonding orbital. And you can explain that it gets displaced by a repulsion with that uh, sigma antibonding orbital. Okay, so that's one way that we have to explain this. But we actually know that these ordinates are true from experiments. Okay? Uh, uh, all right, anyway, so, so let's actually uh, try to figure out here uh, what the molecular orbital diagram would be for O2 by just... Uh, Ray and electronic configurations and uh, put in electrons. Okay, so oxygen is uh, helium and then 2s2, 2p4. Okay, so you will have here electrons, uh, electrons 2, 3, and 4. Okay, that will be the electronic occupation for uh, the atom of oxygen. Here you'll have 2, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so uh, now we have all of these electrons in the atoms that we have to use to fill the molecular orbitals. Okay, so uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is very similar in all of these molecules. Okay, we're done with this part of the diagram. And then what we have here is eight total electrons to put into these molecular orbitals. All right, so that's the first one, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Okay, that is how the molecular orbital diagram for O2 looks like. Okay? All right. We can calculate the bond order for O2. And we will see that it, this is going to be 2 in bonding, 4, 6, 8. 8 in bonding orbitals. And then we'll have 2 in antibonding, 3 and 4 in antibonding. So that would be a bond order of 2. All right, and you guys, seen, uh, you guys have seen Lewis abstractions of the oxygen molecule where there's a double bond in between uh, the two oxygen atoms. In molecular orbital theory, what we say is that the bond order is equal to two. There's something actually uh, very interesting about O2, and that is that if you look at the magnetic properties, you will see that these spins, electronic spins, are not compensated by down spins. Okay, you have that, well, this, these are perfectly compensated, 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 compensated. O2 is actually paramagnetic. And we know this from experiment. You can actually drizzle liquid O2 into a magnet, and you will see that the jet of liquid oxygen deflects, okay, because the magnetic field is able to interact with magnetic moments that these uh, un uneven spins actually have. So this is one of the triumphs of molecular orbital theory. It's able to explain that O2 is a paramagnetic species. Uh, von Small theory can't do that, and Lewis dot structures can't do that. So this is actually one of the reasons that uh, we use today molecular real theory because it is able to do something as sophisticated as explaining why O2 has magnetic properties. Okay. All right. To finish this, uh, to finish up this lecture, we're actually going to go to the last molecule, which is going to be fluorine, 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 and fluorine two. Okay. And again, the only difference here is just, uh, one more, more electron per atom. Two P five. Okay. 
So you'll have here one more like run, and here you'll have one more like run. All right, and you're going to have two more like runs that are going to go right there. All right, so that is the molecular orbital for the uh, fluorine 2 molecule. We can calculate the one order as 2, 4, 6, 8, minus 2, 4, 6, over 2, this is equal to 1. So the one order in F2 is equal to 1, and this molecule does not have an excess of pointing up spins versus pointing down, or the other way around. Everything, uh, all of the spins cancel out, uh, so this molecule is actually diamagnetic. Okay, so this wraps up uh, molecular orbital theory diagrams for uh, second row homonuclear diatomic molecules. Uh, next day in class, we'll talk about heteronuclear diatomic molecules, like say CO or OF or NO. I will actually see how we can try to uh, draw molecular orbital uh, diagrams for molecules that have more than two atoms. And specifically, we'll look at the peptide bond and see how MO theory is successfully able to explain why uh, the bonding environment in the peptide bond is actually planar in the four atoms, which is something that is not naturally expected.